well hello to the next video so now that we are done with the async await uh, we can finally get back on track with writing exciting a uh, new controller mod uh, method sorry so let's get let's go into this file user.js and let's actually define a new route that we need to handle so if you remember the introductory presentation we have um, slash users so let me write it. we have slash users slash id this is how I put it in an introductory video so let's define that one so I'm going to start with router.route and then we'll have um, slash we are already in the slash users so we just need that colon id part like this I'm going to call it however user id um, just for the sake of staying, staying consistent with what I had in mind but of course you can call it um, just id if you, if you prefer so now we are going to have like all the pretty methods inside of here so we are going to have get put patch and delete in this one so let's get started defining them so we'll have get so we'll have get here um, we are going to have put we're going to have patch and we're going to have delete just not the post one okay so let's start with this get um, again let's kind and like call it inside even though the method doesn't exist in the controller and then we'll make one and fill it up with code so let's say that in the users controller there should be a method called well we're getting a particular user so something like get or get user should work wonderfully so let's call it get user like this and now inside of our controller let's actually create it over here so let's it's called get user okay it is also going to be a sync await so let's type that a sync request response next okay and now what we want to do here is well we want to find the particular user but the id is going to provide it via this param so to do that inside of here to get that parameter there is um, there is a way we can access it via request.params and let's simply um, test that out first of all so let's console log simply what's stored in that object by doing this and now let's actually um, use okay okay route users js route users js 13 okay i assume the problem is that we can't have them like hanging like empty like this so um let's simply delete them for now unfortunately and then we will add them later on okay so let's uh, so what we were trying to do is we were trying to see what's stored in this request.params so let's open this side by side open postman and now let's make something up here okay and as you can see we have user id and we have the following um, text that we provided so we can access what we want via this and then user id like this um, yes okay so now um, for the sake of having like a clear code we can simply um, say user id equals request dot params dot user id but um, ES6 allows us to do the following I'm going to make a side by side comparison if you do this then you can actually get rid of this and you will still get the same user id so I'll go with the second approach because it's more concise but in the end it should matter Okay, so now we have a handle on our user ID and then we can actually go in and fetch it. So user model up above he has a method called find by ID, this one. And with this method we simply need to provide an ID. 
so we can use the variable that we just declared but of course don't forget that this is the long running um, function and this actually returns a promise that will then resolve with either an error or a value so we need to await this actually so don't forget that keyword and now this will eventually once that promise resolves return as a user in case it exists so let's store it in a variable like this okay so now we have a handle on that user and then we can simply res status of 200 everything was okay and simply return back that user in question okay so let's now test that method but like we need to check actually and see what their IDs are first so let's say we want to fetch this one I'll simply copy this this particular ID I'll paste it here and okay great yeah you can see we get that particular user back so this method works as we want it to work so let's move on and let's do another one so the next one should be um, put here um, again let's call it before we actually make a, a function inside so users controller dot um, I guess good name would be replace user and replace user instead of update user because like put works in a sense that it wants you to provide like all the field that that user contains and it will simply override it when we are going when later on when we are going to use patch patch actually you can send it any field or any combination of fields and it will just update those so like I'll call this one replace user and with patch I'll call that one um, update user of course um, feel free to to name it different differently just stay consistent with how you're naming them so with the replace user um, let's create that function here sync request response next okay and then what we need to do is well um, two things are going to happen this first of all we are going to have a param similarly like we did in the get but also we want we will have like a body of the client so using the client similarly how we did it for the post if you remember like here we're going to have the same thing basically so inside of our controller we need to we need to fetch two different things first of all we need to fetch the user ID from the request.params like we did previously second secondly we want to fetch the body itself now the body we can access it via the request.body if you remember so let's store it in a variable and let's call it like new user should equal request.body like this now let's console log both of them so let's say user ID is user ID and then let's say um, new user is and then the new user okay now let's open postman let's use this route since we'll still need uh, the particular ID but this time let's take a put and let's come here to the, to the body and let's change a name to like Jack and let's send it so now of course this won't finish but that doesn't matter okay so this time it complains because we have uh, we have declared this function which doesn't exist so let's simply make a scaffold of it so it will leave us alone and we were and we're going to be able to actually test our code um, this should suffice let's see okay great and let's now try this so I send this never finishes but if you if you take a look here we have access to ID and we have access to request.body so now let's let's use them um, inside of a mongoose there is a method 
function sorry um, on the user model that is called find by ID and update so we can go user dot find by ID and update then you need to pass um, firstly the the ID and then the new object that should overwrite the existing one found by that ID so we have user ID here and then we have new user the one that we want to get overwritten with now we need to await this but this time we don't need to wait for it um, we could actually let's do it why not const result equals this and then let's simply um, let's console log results so we can see what happens and for now let's respond back with a status of 200 JSON of results okay um, and let's see what happens now we can cancel this one and I click send and you see the result is this the result um, shows the original user but if I actually get this new one we can see the new one Jack okay great um, so we can simply respond back with um, sending like the, the previous object isn't really good so we can maybe send something like success true for example and now whenever someone makes that change um, Okay, we need to wait a second because the server just started listening. Um, why are we... Okay, sorry, it's get. So now if we click put and I change to Jill, like this, send, we see that success is true and everything works as expected. Um, I'll tell you like up front, the update user is going to be the same but the only difference is going to be later on once we do the um, validation in this in the replace user we will enforce the rule that every field of this object and i mean this first three one ones need to be provided in order for replace user to work but in the update user we can just provide any combination of them and that's why with the replace user when client wants to call the replace user it needs to provide basically entire new object but when client wants to call an update user it, it can simply provide any fields or any combination of fields and this function will still update just those okay so hopefully that wasn't too confusing you'll see actually this um, once we add in a validation for now we can simply have um, same code and actually let me show you so for the puts as you seen previously we can send the, the, the entire set of new fields for example Jill James for example and I can send it and if I get this one you see that it's changed if I go to the patch however and let's say I just want to change the first name to Nick okay and I send it okay why isn't this working we have update user maybe I didn't save it probably that's it yeah I didn't save the file so let's say send you see we get success true remember we just send the first name of Nick if I get this user you see the just first name got sent so this user find by ID and update will actually just change what you send it and that's why we need to enforce that request.body must contain all the fields and here um, request.body may contain any number of fields and that way this should comply with the restful api design in which it states that put should receive the entire new object that should be replaced and patch should only um, contain fields that should get updated okay guys so this is again pretty long one um, 
we're we're still left with doing the delete here, which shouldn't be too hard, and then we can we can move on. Hopefully you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you in the next one.